Welcome to Plug and Play Blues lesson number five. I'm really excited to bring you this one because this lesson is the one that brings together the things that we've learned, the concepts from the previous four lessons. You know, we talked about laying down the groove in lesson one. We introduced some cool micro licks in number two. Number three was all about turnarounds and four was all about chord moves. We're gonna be able to meld all of those ideas together today into a 12 bar piece. But now I wanna say before we get started that this is just my take on what we can do to put these things together and mix and match them in a plug and play style. But the point of this whole series is to arm you with the licks and the knowledge to let you mix and match things the way that sounds good to your ears so you can put your own unique stamp on a 12 bar progression. So I'm going to give you this example to get you started, but after this lesson is over, take it and run with it and create your own cool 12 bar blues sound. All right, let's get started with the example. All right, let's take a walk through of that example piece. We're playing turnaround one from lesson two. To get us into the E groove. And the E groove is four bars and it's gonna look like this. So what I'm doing there is playing the first half of the groove for bar one going to the chord move for the E, then playing the groove again, then answering it with uh, micro lick number five and three back to back. And that sets us up nicely for the A part, but let me play through the first four bars in E rather slowly for you. ready to move on to the A part. The A part lasts for two bars and we're going to do the groove for the first bar. And then for the second bar we're going to split the time between a micro lick and the chord move. So we're going to do the first half of a micro lick and the second half on the chord groove. Here's what that looks like slowly for you. going to hop right back into the E. So we've got the same part that we've already covered before, which is the groove followed by micro lick number five and three at the end. So here's the groove, five and three. Then we get into a B7 and strum through it just like we did in the chord move lesson, lesson number four. And then the same thing for the A from the chord move lesson. So that includes the strumming and that little micro lick at the end. Then we're going to follow it up with a turnaround. I've based the turnaround in the example heavily on turnaround number four from plug and play lesson number three. And that turnaround sounds like this. What I did to spice things up a little bit is add a little lick once I get to this fourth fret note here on the third string. And that lick actually comes out of turnaround number two. And that's simply just sliding back from the fourth to the second and pulling off on the third string. Then down on this E note here on the fourth string. And then we still finish the same way we did with turnaround four. 
so it's a cool way to take a tiny bit, a tiny idea from another turnaround, another lick, and really spice up what we've learned as turnaround four. So here's what that sounds like played slowly. And now I want to play through the example piece rather slowly so that you can catch where these little bits and pieces are plugged in. Here we go. I hope you can see from this example just how much mileage you can get in blues from knowing a few micro licks, a few turnarounds, and a couple of chord moves. The options are just about limitless. So I really challenge you to go back through this course, get deep inside each lesson, pick up these licks, pick up the turnarounds and the chord moves, and then start experimenting. Sure, learn this lesson, but the point is for you to start mixing and matching this stuff in your own way. Put your own unique stamp on this thing. That's when the fretboard becomes a playground for you. And I wish you the absolute best luck as you go through this and come up with your own blues tune. Good luck and thanks for following along.